Um, my name's Rebecca Vivian and I'm with the CESAR uh, group at the University of Adelaide and we run a number of uh, projects in digital technologies education as well as more broadly STEM education and I'm so thrilled to bring you this topic today. Um, we have virtual reality in schools. What is possible? I think that's such an exciting question and I've seen all of the stories that Jason and Melissa are going to share with you today, and they are incredible. The work that they've been doing um, at Gleason College is amazing, and we're so thrilled to be able to bring these stories to you. I'm sure that you'll walk away with some great ideas um, and uh, sparks of things that you'd like to try in the classroom. So we'll do some introductions shortly so you get to know your presenters in a little bit more detail. So just to let you know as well, um, some Zoom tools. So you've got uh, your mute and stop video options on your toolbar. Uh, you can also see the chat function there and interact with participants, which I can see is already happening, which is fantastic. And um, you can also react. So if you'd like to react during the se session, um, the little smiley face with the um, plus button, you can react, you can clap. Uh, you can put your hand up and things like that. And hopefully you won't press, press leave the session. <laughs> We'd love to have you stay through the whole session today. Um, before we move on, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognise their continuing contributions and connection to land, water and community. And I pay my respects to their elders past and present. And we're joining here today in Adelaide uh, we're on the land of the Ghana people, and um, we are thrilled to have you here today. Our session outline. So we have a fantastic jam-packed session with lots of content. It's looking very visual as well, so you'll get to actually see what's happening in virtual reality. We have uh, a starting introduction uh, with Melissa around key features of the Oculus Quest and the virtual reality kit that they've borrowed at Gleason. We'll also um, look at virtual reality for student engagement. So how can you use it across the curriculum and how can you use it to engage students? And this includes examples across science, HASS, senior tourism, art, language, and more. Uh, we also have um, some examples. Jason is going to be walking us through content um, creating content in the virtual world, uh, which is fantastic for getting students um, not just being passive consumers, but also the creators of the technology. And we have, uh, we'll see some examples for art language and um, using the tool CoSpaces. And then lastly, we'll finish on some future directions. Uh, the, the team have put together a fantastic Padlet uh, with some brilliant resources to get you started and continuing on your journey and we'll have some time for questions. So just to recap, um, we will be referring to some of our programs and um, resources available on our CESAR website. So you'll find us at caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au. Uh, the session that um, is being presented today uh, has been sparked through a connection through our national lending library. So we have available AR, AI and virtual reality equipment that schools can borrow for free across Australia um, simply by putting in a request. And this has been made possible through funding from the Australian Government Department of Education, um, Skills and Employment. So we thank them uh, a great deal for the funding that has been able to afford schools to borrow this equipment for free. So I'm Rebecca Vivian, I've already introduced myself, um, but I'd, I'm so thrilled to introduce our guest presenters today. We have Jason Putnams, who's the Science Learning Area Leader at Gleason College. And we have Miss Melissa O'Loughlin, who's the Science and STEM Coordinator at Gleason College. Um, so thank you so much, um, Jason and Melissa, for joining us today. I'm so excited to hear more about the work that you've been doing. So I might just hand over to you if you'd like to do um, some introductions and start to share your journey with us. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rebecca. Um, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, thank you for spending your Wednesday afternoon with us and hearing all the exciting things that we've been doing at Gleason College. 
Um, I'm Jason Putnans. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, I'm the science learning area leader. I've got a, um, a huge interest in um, the world of STEM. So um, having Melissa join our, um, our community uh, two years ago now um, has been a great privilege because we've been able to share um, a common interest in um, exposing our students to a whole range of uh, different uh, STEM um, opportunities. But Thank you. Well, my career actually started a bit different in the school system. I originally worked as a breast and prostate cancer research scientist at the University of Adelaide in what's now known as SA Pathology. I then moved into the school system, and as Jason mentioned, I'm the science and STEM coordinator here at Gleason College, and we're a co-educational co school of roughly 850 students. Okay, so well, I guess I'll get underway. So before learning the kit, I had only ever used this type of technology for fun. The most powerful thing that I've learned is what a dynamic and engaging tool it is to support education. So today's webinar, it comes from a beginner or a starting point of view as we borrowed the kit for two terms. Within that short period of time, we were able to identify multiple departments that it worked well in. And in fact, we've been so impressed that we've actually gone out and bought our own class set. Before we get our one underway, I'd actually like to throw a question to everyone who's joining us today. Virtual reality and technology is certainly changing the way that we work and live. And I'd like you to think about your own personal experience. Where do you see VR being in the next five to 10 years time? I think it's really important that we come back and we share our ideas as this will help us understand why it's an important tool in education. I've broken the uh, talk into four main areas. First, I will cover the Oculus Quest system and just talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages that we experienced in our hands. I'll then move into how we used VR for student engagement and how we created content. And for me, this was the absolute highlight of our work as we moved from being simply consumers of digital technology to being the creators. This is where I'll hand over to Jason and he'll talk about the amazing work of creating content in co-spaces. Lastly, we'll come back together as a group and we can share our answers, where do we see VR in the near future, open up the group discussion, and there'll be time for questions. But before we get started, I just want to take this quick moment to thank you all for being present today. Jason and I are absolutely thrilled that we can share our experience with you. We understand it's been a rather unpredictable year, and it's the end of a busy working day, so we really appreciate the time that you're taking this Wednesday afternoon. I think a big issue for many organisations who would like to use VR but haven't done so relates to how do you actually roll out the VR system? And by this, I mean, what kits do you buy? How do you train your staff? How much does it cost? And where do you actually find content that is aligned to the curriculum? So I hope today's webinar gives you the confidence to get started. So at Gleason College, we started off slowly, getting to know how to use the kits safely but more importantly, finding the right places to use them. The kit presented at a time when the global pandemic was starting to roll out. So what we found was that as our excursions were being restricted and stopped, VR actually opened up new and engaging ways to deliver fun learning outcomes. And although my area of speciality is science and STEM, I saw that could be used across multiple departments. So in the two terms that we borrowed the kit, we rolled them out to our language department, our HAS, and to a small degree, our PD. Um, now, before I discuss these examples within subject areas, I just thought I'd present to you what the Oculus Quest, and, uh, Quest system looks like. Now, I feel that the advantage, or the great advantage of this Oculus Quest system is that it's untethered. This means that you don't need a connecting cable from the gaming headset to a PC. Another example, uh, advantage is it's low cost retailing for only $479 for a 168 gig unit. Now this unit is fully immersive. It has six degrees of freedom, which means you get this really seamless, effortless experience within the virtual world. I've experienced some other um, systems like Google Expeditions where it can be a bit clunky and disjointed, but this one actually just provides you a fluid experience as you move about. There are also four cameras located on the front of the headset and this provides some basic hand tracking functions. So instead of using hand controllers, you just pop the headset on and it detects your hands in the virtual world. This means you can actually pick up objects, 
and increases your immersive experience. It only takes two and a half hours for this headset to be fully charged and the battery life is really decent, lasting for about four hours. The hand controllers rely on batteries and the Oculus Quest 2 have improved battery function, so you will find that they'll last for a good week without needing recharging. And that's one thing we have bought in is rechargeable batteries. So just to go through some of those advantages once again, it's a low cost system. The sound quality is decent. It's a high end product, which allows you that immersive experience. And it can be used by middle school students and senior school students, anyone 13 years or over. Now with these advantages come some disadvantages. And one of those is that you have to find and download your own um, apps. For us so far, this hasn't been a huge disadvantage. It's meant that we can streamline the information that we have presented to our um, departments. Remember, you are supported by the Oculus Store, App Lab and Steam, and new content is always being uploaded. Another slight disadvantage is the amount of space that you actually need to use virtual reality safely. But I'm sure that's the same within all systems. Oculus requires a 1.5 metre guardian boundary, which means you need a safe space uh, where there is no furniture or objects on the floor or 40 centimetres either side. Now more than ever, we need to follow um, safety procedures. And one of the disadvantages of this is that it actually comes with a foam interface. So you will need to go out and buy one of these silicon face intershields. This allows you to disinfect the units between users. I think the major disadvantage to the Oculus system is the mandatory requirement to have a Facebook login. And I know the VR community have been in a bit of uproar about that. We've sidestepped this issue by creating an inert Facebook login. Um, that means it's not linked to our school directly. All our in-app notifications are turned off. All our security settings are turned on and we don't have any friends or businesses aligned to the uh, account. We also don't store any real world pictures within the account, only those that are stored, that uh, we've created in the virtual world, which you will see in today's webinar. So in terms of um, our CSER kits that are available through the University of Adelaide, um, you can loan for your school. So we send out to your school for free a kit and everything is in there ready for you to get started. So this is the kit example that Melissa has borrowed for her school. Um, each kit includes uh, three or four Oculus Quest VR headsets. Um, the one on the screen here is the Oculus Quest 1, um, but Melissa is also starting to experiment with Quest 2 and we're seeing some of those come into our newest kits. You'll also receive an iPad uh, with apps loaded on there. So we preload everything onto the Oculus Quest for you. Uh, and we also include a Chromecast. So you might like to use that for screencasting. And we include an Insta360 One X camera and an SD uh, card, which you can use to take 360 photos. And Melissa is going to be showing us some of those today. We also like to include a Wi-Fi dongle hotspot where we preloaded all of the Oculus Quest kits in the head in the um, kit onto the dongle so that it's ready to go so you don't have to connect it to your own internet or find an internet source everything's um, connected and then lastly we also include some lesson plans that get you started and um, some information about how to use the Oculus Quest kit Well, I might step in there, Rebecca. So the first example I'm sharing relates to science, and I'll discuss a few options while you view the video examples that Rebecca is sharing. The images to the far left show a variety of apps that can be used, and I've included these in the Padlet at the end of the talk, which everyone will have access to. Now, the strength of virtual reality in science is its ability to convey complex information. VR in science allows areas that can't be seen to be represented in a new way. It doesn't take away from great teaching or class practicals, but they add a dynamic new platform. For example, the study of body systems and anatomy can be complemented using software like you're seeing now. This is a short video that I took while wearing the headset to give you a glimpse of the potential. 
And while this 2D video doesn't give you the true immersive feel, you can see how advanced and sophisticated this technology takes learning. In this VR Anatomy app, you can choose from 15 body systems you see on the back screen to interact with. And isn't that a key component in learning, learning by doing? Another great area, uh, sorry, another great science application for VR is Earth and space. Content that is difficult to show due to its massive scale. And, you know, it generally can't be explored in person. So instead of excursions to the planetarium, you can use apps such as Star Chart or Titans of Space to offer incursions, which give you no lag time of travel, saves time and money. In Titans of Space that you're watching now, you can take a guided tour to every planet, the major moons and dwarf planets with narration. So VR is such an inquisitive tool and the flexibility of taking part in virtual excursions along with its clear, immersive explanations of the content enables students to share and build their ideas together. So I'm going to finish, finish off this science section by just giving a few other examples. Physics content can be covered using the Hand Physics app and chemistry content in Molecule Builder, it's worth a look at. Virtual dissections using Victory XR or 3D Organ on VR Anatomy can also reduce the cost and time spent preparing dissection kits and offer a new way to learn content with a hands-on experience. So YouTube also have free content and what you're viewing now is a look inside a human cell which directly aligns with the curriculum. <laughs> Another example of VR use at school was in our Hass and Senior Tourism classes. Earlier this year, we rolled out VR across these departments. The best content that I found available are free YouTube 360 degree videos, which are roughly five minutes long. And I know five minutes doesn't sound like a lot. However, because they deliver a fully immersive experience and takes you out of the classroom into a new country or location, it helps the students gain strong empathy, connections and understanding. So ecotourism is another area where I saw students making these strong connections. They were able to submerge themselves in real life scenes. Virtual trips from Bali to Paris and different cultures across the globe in just a double lesson. And the sensory based platform, it sparked new ideas and discussion. And once again, it's this learning by doing experience where we saw numerous positives. VR, it's such a great, it's such a great tool for exploring locations such as ancient Egypt. And once again, I'll keep saying it, it's that fully immersive experience that delivers what books can't. The Life of Anne Frank is an app available on the Oculus Store. I've used it and it's one where you need more space to use this app as you're transported into Anne's living areas above the shop. It's an interactive experience. You can actually pick up books, open doors and see how tiny the space is. Oh, and Rebecca, this is probably a good time to mention Caesar's free learning content. Yeah, and Melissa, so we've um, included on our Oculus Quest kits uh, the Anne Franks app, uh, but we also have some other exciting apps like Tilt Brush, which you'll see shortly. Um, also, if you go across to our um, National Lending Library page uh, and you scroll down to the very bottom, we have a range of lesson plan and project exemplars. Um, and you can download our virtual reality um, kit lesson plans. So even if you've got kits in your school or you're thinking about purchasing them yourself, you can make use of our lesson plans there. Uh, we also love hearing from teachers. So if you have any lesson plans that you'd like to share or ways that you're using VR, please get in touch with us. Fantastic. Now I've just got two more areas to cover before passing over to Jason. Apologies if I'm rushing through this content. However, there will be time at the end to cover questions. So feel free to write them down. So now I'm going to talk about the huge potential in art. So what you can see on the screen is a video example of Tilt Brush by two of our talented students and a few app recommendations to the left. Our STEM group was initially Oh, sorry, our STEM group initially used this art app and they were led by a CESA representative to create a new Marvel superhero costume. The hand controllers are used as paint tools and you can sculpt, design and paint in 3D. 
The results we saw in the virtual world were absolutely stunning. Each student was immersed in their own life-size virtual art, and they were part of the scene, actually moving around and within their expressive masterpiece. It was truly amazing. Another app that has promising potential is one called Kingsbury Graffiti. It just looks like so much fun. It's highly engaging as you're using virtual spray cans to create wall art. It's contemporary and can provide another type of medium without the work health and safety risks of buying, storing and using spray pan. So we're pursuing this work more next year. An app such as Sculpt VR and Sketch can be used for individual or group work and content can be saved. And let's not forget the value of creating an inspiring hook to teach new art styles. And once again, using those YouTube 360 degree immersive videos, students can take part in virtual art gallery tours to see masterpieces up close. They can create their own virtual art galleries and walk within simulations of Van Gogh's Starry Night and Monet's garden paintings. So we're just going to allow this video to finish up. This um, amazing dragon that you're seeing on the screen now only took the student probably, what do you remember, Jason, about 45 minutes to create. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely stunning how they were able to create and um, understand how to use the hand controllers so quickly. So the last area I'm going to cover is our VR use in our Japanese and Italian language departments. Now, the pandemic, it prevented our students taking part in their annual exchange program. But you know what? Using the kit provided by CESA, one of our senior Japanese classes created a virtual tour of our school. But before I share how we created the virtual tour, I'm just going to touch base on the benefits of using, again, that free content found in YouTube. It allowed the students to travel the globe virtually and Psychic Travel have appropriate content for students to view and these virtual excursions were an absolute hit among the students. The immersive quality of VR, it gives a strong feeling of presence and they learned by living the experience. It was an absolute joy to see their emotional reactions to their experiences in the virtual world. And now it's certainly the closest way they'll stand next to the Trevi Fountain in Italy or walk the busy streets of Japan. So another amazing area we used the VR kit was by our senior Japanese students who created a virtual tour of Gleason College, which we shared with our sister school in Japan. So once again, just due to that pandemic, our students couldn't travel. So they used the kit provided by Caesar to take 360 degree images of their favorite areas within our school using the two Insta361X cameras supplied by the Uni of Adelaide. They then created audio files of themselves speaking in Japanese and along with the uh, pictures, they uploaded these to Tour Creator. The students in Japan who took part in our immersive tour said it was actually great to connect, connect during a time when travel was restricted. This um, engaging tour allowed our students in Japan to see our students, hear their voices, and learn about their favorite areas of the school as they could zoom into the 360 degree photos. We received great feedback from the kids in Japan. The photos shared our sunny Australian weather and gave a day in the life experience of an Australian student. So Rebecca, would you like to show the um, video and also the 360 degree photo now? Yeah, sure. Uh, so what we're doing is we're just going to be showing this using Google Photos. So as Melissa, mentioned uh, it was in Google Tour, but just for the purpose of this presentation, because there's some changes happening with Google Tour, we're showing it here. So I'm just going to play the audio that comes with the video, with the 360 image. Kore wa chū shōjō desu. Takusan kuruma ga arimasu. Dakara chū shōjō wa taihen ōki desu. Nihon wa dō desu ka? So one thing I'll just present as well is that there's also the potential to learn how to speak a language facilitated by VR apps. And you know what, we didn't have time to pursue this. However, we did trial a free subscription to Immerse Me. It's a tool that offers nine languages and places you into learning scenarios to practice the language. So this is where I'm going to hand over to Jason now, and he'll talk about the powerful use of creating content in co-spaces. All right, thanks, Melissa. Um, now, uh, thanks, everyone. Um, I'll be sharing with you what is CoSpaces and how we've used it in the past at Gleason College. 
um, how it can be used. I work with a company called Lumination that's situated in South Australia and also New Zealand. Uh, so apologies to our um, everyone else in the other parts of Australia, but still some handy stuff that we'll discuss. Um, and also the logistics of using co-spaces in your classroom. Um, what I'll be talking to you about isn't anything revolutionary. Um, however, it can be incredibly beneficial if you're able to use it productively. Uh, co-spaces has been around for a while, so you may have already heard about it. Um, but hopefully this session can bring new ideas to your attention and hopefully you'll be able to use it in your classes. Uh, for those who don't know what CoSpaces is, it's a mixed reality web-based application uh, that allows users to create and engage with interactive media content. And when I say mixed, I mean, uh, it can be virtual, uh, virtual reality has, headsets. Um, it can be augmented reality using merge cubes or iPhones. Um, it could just be your desktop computer or even accessed or run on smartphones and tablets as well. Um, CoSpaces allows students to uh, the ability to demonstrate their knowledge in different ways by building uh, virtual interactive worlds, uh, simple or complex, and it's approachable and accessible to students of varying tech abilities. Um, here's a quick video uh, by CoSpaces, which discusses how Co uh, CoSpaces EDU can be uh, used in the classroom with, uh, with teachers and also students. Do your students get to step away from consumption by creating digital content that demonstrates their learning? Class, meet CoSpaces EDU. CoSpaces EDU is a kid-friendly AR and VR creation app that enables building virtually anything. Build immersive 360 degree tours, create interactive stories, design virtual exhibitions, program games with a visual coding language, or conduct any experiment in 3D. All easily built, designed and programmed by you or your students. Creating with CoSpaces EDU prepares kids for their future in the 21st century, whether that's for college, for civic life, or for their career, including in jobs that don't even exist yet. Your students develop their creativity, digital literacy skills, critical thinking, collaboration and communication skills, coding, design thinking, and more. All this while connecting with the study material part of the curriculum, and having fun at the same time. And don't worry, it's easy to implement and intuitive to use. You can use CoSpaces EDU in multiple languages and from any device. Computers including Chromebooks, smartphones, or tablet devices, all with the same account synchronized in real time. Just register for a free account, create your class, and invite your students to join. And where the real fun starts is when you bring the wow effect of VR and AR into the classroom. Let your students dive into their own creations in VR, project what they've built onto the real world in AR, or even hold it in their hands with the Merge Cube. Get ready to engage and captivate your students on a level you didn't think was possible before. Welcome to the magical world of CoSpaces EDU. All right, now while I uh, talk, I might just play the next video. Thanks, uh, Rebecca. Um, these are some examples of what we've uh, oh, not this one again, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, this one. So I'll just uh, talk about how um, these are real examples of how it's been used at Gleason College. Um, so these are three examples that have been used in the last few months. So CoSpaces can be used uh, for a variety of year levels, um, can go from your tech savvy primary students all the way up to your secondary students as a really low entry point. Uh, so it can be used in a basic manner, um, just like building worlds and giving simple one step instructions to your characters. Uh, and then your students can be extended and pushed. Uh, so it has high exit points, such as multi-step coding and physics-based movements as well. Uh, there's loads of YouTube videos. Um, there's a, a CoSpaces um, uh, YouTube account where it actually has uh, tutorial videos. So if you're not tech savvy and you're feeling a bit anxious about it, there's lots of videos to help you out. Um, so how can this be used in your classroom? It can be used in a number of learning areas. In the past at Gleason, it's been used in digital technologies, science, history, geography, and languages, but there's also lots of links to other learning areas as well. Um, from this video, you can see this is a science project on animals where the student created a zoo, which had a whole bunch of information related to the animals in the enclosures. Um, the student coded the zookeepers to explain key information related to the animals that were kept there, um, and uh, also coded different interactive points, because you can also put in pop quizzes as well, so just to test the viewer um, how they're going with it. Um, so if you uh, just wait for the video to catch up, so you can see there's a few areas that you can interact with. So on the left, we have a, a dog show. So if as soon as the user clicks on that, 
um, you can see that the student has actually coded the dog to run through an obstacle course. Um, and there we go, well done dog. All right, so, uh, and then a whole bunch of other information as well. Another example that we've got coming up, uh, this is a Japanese uh, class. So they've uh, looked at a Japanese lantern festival. Um, you can code it where the, those pieces of information which are all in the speech bubbles don't actually come up until, you're interact, um, until they're interacted with, but um, just thought this would be a useful example just to show. Um, so you can create a world where the student actually walks through and experiences all things um, related to Japan. Here we have uh, the first moon landing. Um, so this was uh, for our history uh, class. So the student looked at um, the first moon landing and added some different um, uh, information on there as well. Um, I can see a few questions come through in regards to the free account. I'll explain a little bit more later. There is a free account. Um, it is limited with what you can access. Um, you can definitely get by without having access to the full version. Um, but if you do a little bit of snooping on Google, you can actually find some promotional codes, uh, which will give you an access for uh, between three to 12 months. All right, so that's some of the examples that we've used recently. Um, I might just chat about Lumination, um, which was a partnership that Gleason College had with the Catholic Education of South Australia and also um, um, with Lumination themselves. So, um, Rebecca, if you don't mind going to the next one, we, um, here's a short little video of what we did. Oh, yeah, go ahead, you can play it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now with uh, Lumination, so that's, they're a um, company in Kent Town in Adelaide. Um, from their website, Lumination is an Australian and New Zealand uh, based company that is a leading innovator in education technology and immersive IT solutions. They've got a team of engineers, STEM educators, designers, and software developers. Um, and they work with clients globally to develop future focused software and hardware solutions for education and also the government. They offer a range of tech options. And when we worked with them in uh, last year, a year nine, 10 students from our STEM Society class uh, followed the design thinking process to ideate a solution to a global issue of their choice. So issues included sustainable farming, genetically modified produce, vaccinations, um, and global warming, uh, to name a few. Um, the students then created a co-space, a world in co-spaces, um, to bring attention to a global issue. So initially, Illumination visited our school uh, with Google Expedition headsets and Samsung uh, smartphones, so our students could experience different immersive technology. Um, and then together we brainstormed a, a few global, global issues together, then the students were given time to construct their worlds. Um, after they did that, we visited Lumination in Kent Town, and we did that on an excursion where they were able to view the constructions in an immersive VR room um, that you could see in the video. Um, also, the students were given a little bit of free time to explore, and you can tell that they really enjoyed that. Um, don't mind going to the next slide. Thanks, Rebecca. And um, if you're interested, for those people who are situated in uh, South Australia, um, here's the contact details for Dr. Marissa Bond at Illumination. Um, if you're interested in a part partnering up for a project or visiting their immersion room, um, she's more than happy for you to contact her. Um, going back to space, pro spaces, as I mentioned before, it's free. You can have up to 30 spaces in your class. Um, and as I said, there are limits with the accessible content. 
um, and also some of the coding and the characters and avatars. Um, but there's enough accessible content to make it worthwhile, in my opinion. Um, their website has a 30-day trial code, which will allow you access to everything um, and also increases the class size. Um, but have a look on Google when you find something um, to add to the length using a promotional code. Um, there's my contact details too. I'm always happy to chat about STEM. I love it. And digital technologies is a passion of mine. So if you have a cool resource that you want to share or if you want to discuss anything that you've seen in this presentation, always have, I'm always happy to have a chat. So now we're thanks, going to open up. Oh, sorry, you go. Oh, thanks, Jason and Melissa. They were um, brilliant examples. I'm, I'm blown away. I can see lots of chatter happening um, about people appreciating the, the brilliant examples that you've been sharing. Um, we're just moving into a little bit of an interactive component now. So coming back to Melissa's earlier question at the start of the session um, in thinking about where virtual reality will be in the future. So I'll hand over to Melissa, who's going to talk us through this part. Okay. Well, uh, this is the time that I wanted people, if, has anyone um, offered any of answers in the forum? It's not something I can see at the moment, um, about where do they think VR will be in the next five to 10 years time? Have there been any answers uploaded? If not, we can just move to the Padlet, perhaps. Yeah, maybe if people want to turn their uh, microphone off, you're welcome to share with us your experience or pop it into the chat while we're having uh, a look at the Padlet here. Okay, so we might actually just talk about this Padlet because this is why I think VR is an important tool in education. It's already part of our um, careers at the moment. So if we want our students to engage in employment, they're going to be quite heavily facilitated by VR as a learning tool in work health and safety, in becoming app designers themselves. And I've provided some examples under future directions within this Padlet. There'll be a huge market in esports, in having virtual holidays, work health and training, Engineers are currently using this type of technologies where you have specialist engineers from another country loading systems within VR and, you know, getting the best from different country locations. Police already use it for their training. Um, the healthcare system use it quite heavily for nursing training or doctors or what to do when presented um, in certainly health scenarios. Is there anything you would like to mention, Jason? Uh, not at the moment. No? Okay. Other areas, we've also covered other areas to cover in the apps to the right, to the panel to the right. Gravity Lab, that's another one that I'd really like to try out, and Sculpt VR. Tilt Brush is one that's already on the Oculus system that you'll borrow from Caesar, and King Spray Graffiti is one that we're going to be using next year. Once again, for any language department who are taking place, there are apps that you can actually have um, to help train in those areas. Monly is one. Immerse Me, as I mentioned before, that's a paid subscription but um, has great reviews so far. Is there anything you would like to mention, Rebecca, about where you think VR will be in the next five to ten years' time? I think I completely agree with what you're saying in that these... Um we're seeing VR in all sorts of industries. Um, it's been around in real estate for quite some time. It's being used in hospitals to transport patients into other locations, you know, getting them out of the hospital environment. I can see there that you've got a really interesting example, future directions. Police are now using it for training. Um, we can see people using it in, um, in re emergency response and rescue scenarios. Um, we're also using it at the University of Adelaide in terms of training medical students, providing them with the experiences of operating theatre room um, operations before they're going into the workplace. And so mm -hmm. it's putting them into that, that experience. But the students are going to be the future creators of the technology or in workplaces where they're thinking about where it could be used. So, you know, they might be a professional working in law or medicine or art and think wow let, you know we could be using virtual reality in this um, kind of context so they'll be bringing the ideas into the future 
absolutely. And I think with the pandemic as well, it's restricting how many people can be um, at a certain location. So rolling out VR is a way to train people up virtually. Um, and even our retail business of online shopping, there's going to be huge growth market in the future of online virtual shopping. Coles and Maya have already started um, a unit up. So once again, it's that future direction of where our students will use the content in schools and take it into future careers. Uh, if I may, sorry, I was a bit late in joining in. Uh, Roy Anderson from Catholic Ed, um, NT. Uh, one of the other really important um, things to consider is actually making of the assets. So uh, I love co-spaces and I'm currently trying to figure out how to get um, other 3D assets into, uh, into the space to use. And so using things like um, Blender and uh, even even game design, you know, when you're actually thinking about game design, it's not just about designing a game, but designing an environment. And so you have those virtual areas where you're where you are training people, but actually somebody has to build that environment. So and, and that's a whole um, another level of of um, uh, you know uh, expertise. And some kids are really good at doing that. I mean, you know, Minecraft's another area where you're actually building environments, but um, I think we, we need to also consider, because, and in terms of media, you know, you can create um, sounds and videos and all those other things that actually become so rich in building those, um, those uh, spaces. Absolutely. That's a very good point. And, and by introducing these learning experiences in primary and secondary skills, you're building up student skills and understanding of the technology and the language and the spatial skills that go with that. Um, but yeah, absolutely people creating more content for people to use across all sorts of industries and not, yeah, like you're saying, not just VR as well. Um, I was going to say, <clears throat> I'm not sure if people have heard of the metaverse that's being developed currently by uh, big software companies, which is all um, immersive VR and a place where people can actually um, live out their whole day, almost like The Sims, but in VR. And they're thinking that's going to completely transform um, the internet and the way we look for things online and the way we um, live out our day-to-day -day life. So, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's um, talk Facebook of wanting to create that um, virtual world, social worlds in, in virtual reality. So it'll be really interesting to see where that goes, I think. I, I still struggle and I know um, somebody has made the comment about what do we do in primary schools with um, being able to use VR. I know Illumination create, uh, make um, kits uh, that are available. Um, but it, it's really hard to, to try and get those um, devices, if you like, in primary school. What sort of ideas have you got for that, please? I have seen some areas where instead of having individual headsets, it's actually like an immersive room where the whole room actually has whole walls lit up with immersive screens, like kind of like the Van Gogh's art that we have had here in Adelaide, which is a, a lot more of a pleasurable experience for young children to take part in. And I guess you don't have the, you know, um, complexity of sharing headsets as well for the young students. They don't get any of the cyber sickness, but you can use just one screen to create an immersive room. That's one area I've seen for primary schools. Um, um, to to add on to an option because that way the students aren't actually using the headsets themselves. So if you did use uh, CoSpaces, is um, links up with uh, Merge Cube. So that way you can create something which the students just look through their tablet or um, their iPad. Um, at the creation they've made. So that's probably my suggestion in regards to that. Um, I was going to add to what Melissa said. There's a, a 360 room at the University of South Australia in Off Frome Street. Um, so they've created a um, complete immersive um, space. And 
we've got um, some, you know, some people mentioning building immersive uh, 360 rooms. So you can also view some 360 experiences on a desktop computer or a tablet. So it's not fully immersive, um, but students will still sort of see that 360 um, experience. Okay, so we might have, um, we have some questions that have been coming through the chat. Uh, Celia, if you wanted to jump in and, and ask any questions that have popped up or I'm happy to answer them, if ask them if you wanted to pass them through. Okay, there was a few um, sort of technical, sort of hopefully should be quick answers. Um, was bandwidth uh, an issue at your school when viewing the 360 YouTube videos? It can be, and it depends on every school or organisation's um, setup and configuration. We found that we've, we've only got a couple of units at the moment. We've got more coming this week, and it hasn't been an issue connecting with the internet. However, I think as we get more units, we probably like the university provide their own internet uh, gongle, and that's what schools will need to do. Great. And um, if you're using your own headsets, do you, need, do you have to buy the app for each headset? No, you don't. Once you have one account, you buy one app only, and the pricing can range from anywhere from $15 up to $50 for the more popular, such as Tilt Brush. But once again, once you have bought one account, that's all you need for all of your headsets. And does each headset require a unique Facebook login? And there's a few other questions about Facebook later on as well. No, just one Facebook login. And where is students' work saved? Um, yes, they can be saved. Uh, we haven't moved into that greatly, but that's something that we'll be moving into next year. So, but where are the projects they create saved? I think is more of the question. Ah. Um, so Tilt Brush has its own um, uh, memory system, I, I guess just on the app itself. So um, then when you access it, you can actually, um, it redraws live the, the artwork. Um, and then if you want to, you can actually upload it onto your headset and you can connect your headset onto it um, through a cable to your desktop computer and uh, download it from there, which is what we did in order to show the video. And something, uh, something that we've tried, we've run uh, some workshops where in the past we had uh, used Google Poly to upload any 360 content, but with that closing, uh, we're now looking at different options and we've been using Sketchpad, so you can... Um, now have an option to upload directly from within the Tilt Brush app to Sketchfab and then you can view um, all the artefacts together and publish them and then share them with other people online as well. Cool. Um, uh, do you have a risk assessment for use uh, for using VR headsets in schools or is there some documentation already presented by somebody? Of course, we can never use equipment in schools without a risk assessment is the number one. So, yes, we do. We're happy to share that if anyone needs help. And Melissa has also put together a brilliant guide around some tips and advice on using VR in schools, and we'd be happy to share that out with the resources to all the participants if Melissa's happy with that. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got the SOP as well, which we're happy to share. Excellent. We're skimming through these really quickly. Um, which equipment do you need to get started and how much would it cost for a minimal setup? Ah, that depends on the amount of space and how many students you have per class. The Oculus Quest 2 retails for $479 for a 168 gig unit. And that depends on how many of those class sets you'd like to get in. We have, we think that a class set is um, approximately six units. But once again, you need to think about the space. Um, with something like the um, co-spaces, you can get your students to test their coding just by sitting at their own tables and not moving about, but just swiveling from side to side on their chair. When you have other apps like Tilt Brush or Anne Frank, they need a much larger space, that 1.5 metre square area. That's not available in most classrooms, so you do need to think about where you'd like to use this unit safely, a larger area, like a, a gym or a multi-purpose room. Oh, I'm sorry, we bought them from the Oculus store. Yeah. And in terms of um, strategies, Melissa, do you have any strategies for sharing perhaps if you can only get one headset or two headsets for your class or your school? How, how can you go about making the best use of that time? Absolutely. We had that when we bought, borrowed the four units, we had class sizes of up to, you know, 26 students. So he's put them into um, groups of, you know, four to five students 
and other students would be doing work when someone had it was their turn to have the headset on they would then share that information with their peers they would might do a venn diagram or an oral presentation at the end just so that they could showcase their learning and it wasn't just use of that fun um, immersive experience where it can be quite playful but we do have to align it with the learning content so they were responsible at the end to give a short one or two minute presentation as a group and actually within teams as well we, we found that it took away from that traditional learning of the teacher being instructive at the front of the room whereas you'd have four learning hubs of students you know researching their own information coming together at the end as a group and sharing their ideas. So it was that collaboration and communication which really elevated a, a classroom experience. And just one more simple practical one, I think, was um, uh, is Cospace is free? I think you answered that one already. It yes, is. yeah, free, yes. Um, uh, but with limited um, access to content. But I think enough to get by if you're going to use it simply, um, but if you're going to push it to the next level, then um, um, you have to look at purchasing extra spaces. Um, you can get a one month trial code. I think it's one month off the top of my head. Um, but as I said, if you, I've done this before, this is a bit of a sneaky one, but you can um, um, look for a promotional code to extend it to three months or even, it could be even a year. And the last one with tour, tour, career, um, tour creator closing in June, is there an alternative? I was so sad when Tour Creator went away. We, our Japanese tour was absolutely amazing. Um, yes, Google, Ex oh, it's called Expeditions Pro, and I'm a beta tester for that at the moment. They haven't actually launched it to the public, but just allowing testers to come on board. Keep an eye on that one. It should be available early next year. Wonderful. And oh, sorry. If you were to use Expeditions Pro, you can think of other platforms such as ThingLink, ThingLink allows you to pop in 360 degree videos and you can add audio, add um, hotspots of video um, web addresses, photos, and it really allows you to link a tour in that virtual world. That's another area to look at. Excellent. And there are there is a bit of chat and a few questions around the use of Facebook. Um, with four minutes to go, I'm not sure whether you want to go into that little minefield at the moment, but I'll leave that open. <laughs> If anyone wants, wanted to um, say anything about that. I think the most important thing, well, if, I guess you also need to compare it between your school Facebook account that they use to publicise schools, where there are actually, you know, photos and images of teachers in your classroom stored in there. Our Facebook account is completely closed off and it only shared, it only has images of the virtual world stored on it. So um, we don't have any personal content, content on there whatsoever. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, I think that was the main ones I caught from the chat. If I've missed anybody's important one, uh, let us know again in the chat. But that was thank all you the ones so I saw. much. Thanks, Celia. And thank you, everyone, for asking those questions. They were really interesting and so useful for others listening in. Uh, so we've got here a link to the Padlet. So if you'd like to jump in and have a look at some of the resources, that Gleason College have put together. Um, feel free to jump on after the session and browse. And um, Melissa and Jason have also put together some links to resources that, that have been talked about in this session. So the Oculus um, homepage, Padlet um, with the resources there, as well as a couple to um, our Caesar MOOC pages. So the lesson plan exemplars, but we've also put in there a story that we put together um, based on the Gleason College experience, and that's a great one to go and have a read um, or share with your colleagues as well. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to Gleason College and in particular uh, Jason and Melissa for joining us today and sharing such an inspiring and um, invigorating experience with virtual reality in schools. I think you've absolutely answered the question, which is virtual reality in schools, what's possible? And you've given us um, so many ideas and things to think about in terms of bringing these experiences into the classroom. And I love how you've taken it from um, thinking about across the curriculum, across all these different um, learning opportunities, as well as providing experiences 
um, for students perhaps who you know couldn't otherwise have those experiences in in those situations and I love how you made use of it during COVID lockdowns um, particularly for the students who couldn't go to um, on their peer excursions and so on so thank you so much for your time and all the time that you've taken to prepare the presentation today I'd also like to say thank you so much um, to the participants for joining it's been wonderful to have you um, take the time out of your day uh, to join us. Um, I'm just bringing you back to our CESAR Digital Technologies Education homepage. So um, if you'd like to look at any of our resources, we also have a number of free online courses for teachers and um, some professional learning workshops. If you're in Adelaide, uh, we have a virtual reality workshop for teachers on campus at the University of Adelaide coming up in November. So uh, if you go to our uh, web page you'll be able to find the details about that in one of our news posts and if you have any questions please reach out and contact us at caesar at adelaide.edu.au um, we're also very keen on your feedback uh, we'd love to hear from you so that we can look to um, present more sessions like this if you like this session please respond to the feedback it helps us seek um, you know, more opportunities and, and learn from what you like to hear about as well. So we'll just pop that link into the chat and we can allow some time if you wanted to stay around and look, um, respond to that one. Um, so we're going to stop recording now and um, say thank you so much again for joining us. It's been wonderful to have you part of this session and we hope that you have um, a wonderful day.